What's happening, man? Hey, Rick. How you feeling? Good. How are you? Good. What's life on the road like these days? It's been really good. Yeah, really great. Like playing's been really fun, and you know, it's it's a different kind of lifestyle. Just like everything is aimed towards being able to get up on stage and do that. And it took me like about a month and a half, pretty much the whole European tour. Every time I walked out into one of those stadiums to play, I was shocked about the amount of people you know like yeah. like i thought we had played stadiums before in europe and now i realize we hadn't <laughs> like, wow maybe we'd played some festival we hadn't played anything that looked like that wow every night that amount of energy coming from the people and putting out what you feel like you have to put out it's just every day when i wake up i can't imagine going up on stage and in front of that many people and doing that but you just gradually build yourself towards it throughout the day and I don't know, it's just a real different state of mind, but I enjoy it. I enjoy practicing all the time. That's the main thing I do is just practice. And yeah. is the energy of the audience, like can you use the energy coming from the audience to channel that into what you're doing? Yeah, it seems like that happens. That's what I'm preparing myself to take place because what I play when I'm practicing it's not nearly as intense ever, no matter what I warm up with. It's not nearly as intense as what I do when, once I'm up there. It's just like, I feel like it's something about the people and the, hap the general feeling of happiness that brings that out of me. And you can practice all you want, but there's really no practice for doing that other than doing it, you know, because there's no way to simulate it. And so yeah. I feel like I'm just warming up. I'm looking forward to next year and stuff. Yeah. You know. So I think the last time we talked, we were starting to talk about playing on albums and we got through Mother's Milk mm -hmm. and then we got distracted and never kept going. Exactly. So Mother's Milk, it was not a great experience for you. And was that, I can't remember now, was that your first time in a proper recording studio recording or no? Well, the first time was when we did the song Taste the Pain and that went really well. Like did it in one take and everything, you know, went really smoothly yeah michael beinhorn was just hyped when we were making the record and he, he he was taking on a lot of pressure i think he had put a lot of pressure on himself that it's got to be the greatest album ever and all this stuff and and he definitely uh imposed that on me and me especially because uh i think he felt like i was young and you know he could really guide me and stuff like this and you know so the, the album felt forced i've you know, since doing interviews recently, I, I, I've kind of reflected on that period, especially once we got on tour, because once we started touring with Chad after the record had come out and stuff, it, it really, we really had a thing. Like, I think even a couple of years later, I didn't appreciate what that was. Yeah. I was such a fan of the band before I was in the band that I thought of the magic of that band really highly with Hillel and Jack. Mm -hmm. But... I recently heard just, I heard, I listened to one song of us around that time of the Mother's Milk tour doing the what was usually our first song back then, the first song they ever performed on stage uh, out in LA. And man, I was like, wow, we were really good. I was like, I was, because I always think I was bad at that time. And I, I listened back to it and I was like, wow, we really had something that that, that, that other band didn't have. Like we had this very intense energy like there was something kind of mellow in comparison about about the previous band like we really did play every note like it was going to be our last like there was this passion and intensity and and i don't know considering that it was basically funk music and that we were playing it that hard i i just don't feel like there's ever really been anything like it and i even though i had an ego about it at the time i don't think i really appreciated like yeah. how special it was and and i think when i really felt like i found myself i kind of mellowed out a bit you know and stopped pushing myself on the music so much and but there really was something we had then in 88 89 that was or i guess in particular 89 that was really like powerful i saw you guys at the greek theater at that time and it was mind blowing Right. Yeah, that was the very last show of that tour. So Yeah. Yeah. And and I think part of it also has to do with Chad because if you think of what drummers in funk bands sound like, like if you think about James Brown's drummers, right. they're super groovy, but they play almost like jazz, like like very subdued, groovy, but not loud.